This is something where we could say that sentence again. Houston, we have a problem, guys. Look up, look up. It's right now above our head. Thousands of metal objects are screaming through space like faster than a rifle bullet. And that is not good, guys. We could be just days away from disaster. You can see them, you can hear them, but they are there. And if just one thing, guys, goes wrong, just one, we may permanently lose access to space. You hear me right, access to space. We've looked at space quite often on this channel right now because of this mysterious interstellar object or whatever the heck it is, 3i Atlas playlist is in the end screen, by the way. But guys, this is something that could happen not in decades, not in the distant future. It could happen right now or in days. So guys, let's look into this, what I am talking about. And before we do this, please, do me a favor, give this video an early like and click that hype button. Helps my channel, doesn't cost you a thing. Thank you so much, guys. So I'm not talking about science fiction here or any conspiracy theory. This is not um, like a Hollywood disaster movie script or anything. Guys, this is really real. This is quantified risks. And the, the, the scientists are now warning that the orbit that our orbit, the Earth's orbit, has become a house of cards. What do I mean with this? You know house of cards, how easily they can crumble, boof, and it's over. So pull out just one card, right? And an entire structure collapses. So I want to explain to you in very simple times what this syndrome that we're talking about right now really is. It's a syndrome. It's called Kessler Syndrome. And why does this all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you have corrected me quite often. Why is this all of a sudden such a problem? Why does it matter right now? And how could a single event taking out one card trigger a chain reaction that, and listen to this guys, that traps humanity on earth for generations? Traps. So no more going to Mars sending life to Mars and occupy other planets? Nope. Here's the most disturbing part, guys, listen closely. We already know how close we are to this. And there's now a number for it, a clock. It's like, it's a doomsday clock. Well, that clock says 2.8 days. So, okay. Let's rewind this, guys. What am I talking about? I'm not crazy. So what does space really look like for us people that were not astronauts? Because most people imagine space as empty, but guys, it isn't. The low Earth orbit, that's a region that is um, just a few hundred miles or kilometers above us. It's not that far. It's more like a high-speed junkyard. We really high speed. That's that's also the problem. So junkyard of, of what? What's there? We know there's active satellites, but there's also dead satellites. There's broken satellite fragments. There's old rocket stages. There's paint flakes, metal shards. And you know, we're sending up more and more satellites, so many satellites, more than ever. And the whole Shizzy that's up there. The whole junk is moving at roughly 28,000 kilometers per hour, roughly 20,000 miles per hour. This is insane. And at that speed, imagine this. Like a bolt the size of a coin can destroy a satellite if, it, if it's hit by that. A fragment the size of a grain can punch through metal at that speed. Now, Here's the key idea. The satellites, they don't sit still. We know that, right? They, they, they don't hover. So they also, they race around the Earth every 90 minutes, crossing paths with thousands of other objects. And recently, guys, something changed. Let's talk about mega constellations. That's the game changer. 
Until a few years ago, space was crowded, yes, but manageable. And then came the mega constellations. Thousands of satellites launched into nearly identical orbits. Same altitude, same traffic lanes, right? Largest example is Starlink. I'm using Starlink very, very often, and I, I do have a Starlink, right? But Starlink is not the only one. Just don't blame Starlink. Amazon is building its own. China is building its own. So soon, tens of thousands more will join the, or the ones that are already up there. And here's what that means in practice, guys. Like, we have the numbers. Every 22 seconds, two satellites pass within one kilometer, like 0 0.7 miles within each other. So if we only take Starlink alone, close approaches happen every 11 minutes. If that was our air travel, we would not fly anymore, wouldn't we? I certainly wouldn't. So each satellite must constantly dodge other satellites. Like on average, one satellite performs more than 40 collision avoidance maneuvers per year. And that's about to multiply. Multiply that by thousands. So we have over 100,000 orbital maneuvers per year already executed perfectly without error. So space, really, <laughs> did you know that? Space, guys, has become like air traffic control without pilots, basically. So why is this terrifying? So far, we have to say that we've been lucky. We didn't have catastrophic collisions. We haven't had chain reactions yet, but the entire system, and that's the scary part, depends on something that is extremely fragile. Perfect control, perfect communication, perfect timing. Every second, every day, forever. And that raises, of course, the brutal question. It's really brutal. What happens if control is lost? Not forever, not even for a week, just for a short time. What happens? Let's talk about the Kessler syndrome. It's very important because the Kessler syndrome is a chain reaction. And it works like this. Two objects collide in orbit. The collision then creates thousands of fragments and those fragments then hit other satellites. Those impacts create even more fragments and the process feeds itself. And eventually, orbit becomes too dangerous to use. Think about sending a manned spacecraft up there. So no satellites, no launches, no space travel. That's what it really means. Think about military defense, how they're using satellites. For so many things, we're using this now. On our channel, we talk about earthquake predictions, measuring fault movements with satellites, measuring earthquakes, finding microseismic earthquakes to give predictions for volcanic eruptions. But that's just a tiny fraction of what we use satellites for, right? Navigation. So. Earth becomes surrounded by a cloud of shrapnel that's moving at hypersonic speed. And once that starts, I want to make that clear, it cannot be stopped. How do you want to stop it? You want to send a huge vacuum up in space that collects it all, a huge magnet or something like this? Well, let's rewind back to the 1970s. That idea was already proposed and talked about. Back then, it really sounded theoretical because there was not much up there in space, right? But today, that's a total different game. It doesn't look hypothetical. So we have a crash clock, guys. The number that changes everything. Boof, there it is, as I always say. So scientists recently introduced a new metric. So think of it as a stress test for the Earth's orbit. And scientists ask a simple question. 
So if satellite operators lost control, how long until the first major collision happens? And this is called the crash clock. And here are the results, guys. They're not good. In 2018, the crash clock was about 121 days, meaning we had months to recover from a system-wide failure. I have to say last year, in 2025, the crash clock collapsed to 2.8 days, less than 72 hours. Let that sink in. This, is, this clock now really tells us she's is going to hit the fizzy. If control is lost, even briefly, a collision is likely in under three days. That's what this clock is telling us, 2.8 days. And if control is lost for just 24 hours, there's a 30% chance of collision anyway. One collision, one collision is enough. One, one. And why? Why one collision is all it takes. A single satellite collision is creating thousands of fragments and they do not disappear. There is no garbage collector coming. They don't slow down quickly. That's also a problem. They keep the speed. They stay in orbit for years to come, sometimes even decades. So each one basically becomes a new bullet that is shooting through space. And this is how like a slow problem becomes a runaway disaster. It's, we can call it a seed event. Once seeded, the process can continue for centuries. And that's a big problem since we're really, really dependent on our satellites. So, but we have to talk about the real danger. How could control be lost? I mean, we have AI now, supercomputers. It's not like, you know, in, in like 1998, for example, where programmers were told, you know, you got to create software that's reliable and look at the space shuttle. The, the error of the error margin of that software is like around 3%, less than 3%. I'm like 3%. These days, that would be crazy, right? So how could we lose control? And guys, the answer is uncomfortable. The sun, the sun. Talking about solar storms. You know, I've recently made a video about solar flares. Do they cause earthquakes? Do they cause volcanic eruptions. No, they don't. This is sci the scientific knowledge that we have. There have been studies that looked into this. No, the sun doesn't. But up in space, when you're closer to the sun, it has an effect. And solar storms are not rare. And when we have strong ones, they're unpredictable. So when the sun erupts, communication can fail. We know that on Earth. Navigation systems can glitch Electronics can be damaged, but there's another effect that many people do not know about. Solar storms heat the Earth's atmosphere. Let's stay away from the climate change issue, right? They do. And what does that cause? That's the interesting part. It, it causes the Earth's atmosphere to expand upwards. So satellites experience more drag, their orbits shift, and their positions become uncertain. Hint, hint, can we control that? I'll give you an example. In 2024, a strong solar storm forced over half of all low Earth orbit satellites to burn fuel just to stay where they are to not be dragged. And some, unfortunately, were lost entirely. So now imagine a stronger storm, like a storm that knocks out real-time tracking, command uplinks, coordination systems. So suddenly we have no maneuvers, no avoidance, no control. And the clock starts ticking. 
2.8 days, guys. And this is not just about the internet, right? I, I said it, if the Kessler syndrome starts, GPS fails, weather satellites fail, military surveillance fails, disaster monitoring fails, space launches become completely impossible. Humanity just doesn't lose only their satellites. Um, we lose access to space for generations. And we have a huge problem here on Earth because then we're going back, backwards. And we are the ones who made this worse, the problem, right? So the problem didn't have to be this fragile. But for example, we have done anti-satellite weapons tests that have created debris clouds up in space. Old rocket stages were left in orbit. Disposal rules were really, really weak. Enforcement was basically minimal. And even now, the fines are rare, the rules are inconsistent, the cleanup is almost non-existent. Um, new policies that have been implemented, they help, but they do not solve the core issue. If control is lost, rules don't matter anymore. And um, how can I name this, what I'm about to tell you? Probably the uncomfortable conclusion. We have built something powerful, yes, and it's very, very useful. It has brought us ahead a lot. Global internet, global coverage, global connectivity, but um, we built it on a knife's edge. I really have to say that. Um, this is a system that must, it must work perfectly all the time, no exception, with no margin of failure. And now, this is why I said uncomfortable conclusion. Now, the scientists are telling us we are no longer talking about decades. We're talking about days. One storm, one failure, one collision. And the door to space slams shut. Over and out. So the question is no longer. Could the Kessler syndrome happen? The question is... Um, how long can we keep being that lucky? Guys, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, thank you for your like. Thank you for your hype. Thank you for sharing. If you want to become a member of this channel for behind the scene videos, where I am when I'm using my Starlink, actually, um, click the join button. And if you want to support the channel with coffee and fill me up, the link is in the description. Guys, stay safe. Enjoy the internet <laughs> while it lasts. Your GPS on your car. And I see you soon. The clock is ticking. Bye-bye.